What's the point of entering tournaments if the people there have been playing for years? I have no idea how a melee tournament even works or where to find them, so I don't go. I'm still learning how to play this game, and I would just get bodied if I went to a tournament, and I bet the people there wouldn't even want to play me. Almost every single person involved in the melee community has had these thoughts at some point before attending, and if you are in a similar unsure situation right now, we are here to tell you that this scene has an open seat for you. Our goal today is that no matter where you are on your melee journey, you will leave this video with all the tools you need to be encouraged, confident, and knowledgeable at your first tournament. To the people who consider themselves an onlooker of the melee scene, to the folks asking how do I get melee in the YouTube comments of the latest HBOX video, to the kids who figured it out and have netplay but are still getting demolished and taunted on and slippy unranked, this video and the comments section below are for you. There are no bad questions, we all started somewhere, and we are encouraging you to use this YouTube comment section as a helpful resource and a solution to your problems. After giving this video a watch and maybe a like, drop a question below if you're still confused about anything. And to those people who understand this scene as much as we do and maybe questioning whether they should even watch this, do me a huge favor. Hit the comments and see if there's anyone you can help out with your magical melee knowledge. We all love this game, we all love sharing it with other people, and maybe with a little luck we can create a warm and welcoming place in a world full of mean and toxic YouTube comments. Again, with a little luck. Lastly, before we get started, as of the recording of this video, we currently live in a hellscape of a world that is 2020, and while we highly encourage you to attend events only in a safe and future world, this video will attempt to give you the tools you need to join the community online and the ones you'll need after a pandemic time skip. I promise that the Falco incessantly taunting you on Unranked is probably a pretty cool person IRL, and here's Austin Melee's 10 tips for joining the SSBM community. AKA Alston Melee's Tournament Survival Guide. Results may vary. Subscribe for weekly melee content, leave a comment for what you want to see next, and number 10, how to get melee and the other stuff. When Babe Ruth pointed a center field in 1932 at a Chicago ballpark, he did not do so with the wiffle bat and sandals. He did so with a perfect 40 ounce bat and a nice pair of cleats. I don't know baseball stuff, but Wikipedia told me that. When Mango won Royal Flush, he might have had flip-flops on, but he was using a premium GameCube controller on a great CRT. Point is, the tools you use to craft your journey matter, and we'll give you a rundown on how to get all the stuff you'll need for that voyage. And for those of you who already have these items popping up on your screen right now, feel free to skip to the next entry, and we'll see you at number nine. Finding the right GameCube controller can be a tedious process, but if you're just starting out, we're gonna make it sound easy and give you the do's and don'ts. At the time of recording this video, unfortunately there just really aren't any good third-party options. So to help you out, let's boot up an internet search and give you some examples of what we would purchase. But to be clear, this is just for reference, and if possible, you should go support your local game store rather than this evil corporate Amazon, cause that mom and pop shop is as grassroots as we are. Okay, GameCube controller. All right, big no-no here. Any of these Switch controllers or wireless Bluetooth stuff just isn't gonna work for your GameCube or Wii, so these are all definitely no's. Okay, bad, but I'll touch on this in just a second, and here, yes, yes. Seeing this box means that you're probably in the right place in terms of latest release controller models, and this would be a great place to just end your search, but for the sake of the tutorial, let's go back. Okay, so big no, these ones that try to be so generic that it looks official or any of these two for 18 Walmart bullshit is going to give you a controller that feels like you're trying to wave dash with an easy bake oven. It feels awful, you're gonna hurt your hands, and for the sake of your friend who will inevitably borrow said controller, just don't buy it. Or a wave bird. Just, just don't, just, I don't even, just don't. If you're looking for an official older model controller, most likely it will state very clearly that this is an official Nintendo GameCube controller and likely can be found in the $35 to $70 range depending on the condition and color. These controllers and the previously mentioned newer models are definitely your safest bet. We are living in a digital world and in the words of Digimon Season 1 opening, we gotta change into digital champions to save the digital world. 
That's the best line we've ever written. Thanks to the wonderful work from some of the smartest people in this community, you can really hit two buttons and suddenly be getting comboed by someone four states away on a more than playable connection. Head over to slippy.gg and check out videos like Radar SSBM's How to Set Up Slippy Online for a great place to start. In the description of this video, we've linked some great resources to make all of this shit easier, as well as tools to get Slippy on rank to run on even the most dog shit of computers. Call us old fashioned, but we do believe that owning a real setup is an almost essential part of the puzzle if you're setting out to be the best ever or just get the full experience from this game. Playing someone on Slippy on rank just feels a little different than playing someone in person on a CRT. In the same way as playing friendlies with your homie feels a little bit different than playing in tournament against a stranger. In pandemic days, this is much less relevant, but we highly recommend picking up these items for some IRL melee. Even if you aren't a millennial with two Wiis and a GameCube tucked away in a closet from your childhood, getting your hands on a GameCube or Wii can still be pretty easy. Your local game store, Facebook marketplace, or even asking your friends can all net you good results because let's be real, there are Wiis everywhere. Grabbing a melee disc isn't as easy unfortunately, and along with being hard to find in some scenarios, that beautiful GameCube disc is probably going to net you around 60 bucks. A great tip for those of y'all experienced with the emulator side of things or can sit through a 20 minute how to video and learn something from it. With the help of an SD card, a Wii can be fully unlocked with some elbow grease and a homebrew install. If you're on a budget and have the patience, you can turn a 10 to $20 broken disk drive Wii into a multi-console jailbroken Nintendo legal team nightmare. Listen, I know. Trust me, I, I know. The idea of adding a 40 pound, 23 inch catheter ray television made in the early 2000s may be off-putting to most, but we promise there are benefits to playing on these big hunks of plastic. To save this video five minutes worth of an explanation, AV cables no like big flat TV and make lag on big flat TV. We resort to these big old school TVs because of their compatibility with AV cables, making the lag and input delay incredibly low. And again, these old TVs have come with a couple cool advantages. First off, they're free or dirt cheap. Like TV at the end of the driveway begging to be taken away dirt cheap. This is another scenario where a Craigslist free option might have plenty to offer, or even your friends or family might have one laying around. The only thing to really make sure of is that it works, has these inputs, and has a way to get to the Video 2 channel. While it can be a hassle to wrangle in all these almost ancient pieces for the first time, the fact that you can find people practically begging you to take their old TV or closet dwelling console is a huge plus. And even cooler, almost all of these things are completely customizable and have way more personality than a 4K TV could ever hope for. Number nine, use your resources. Okay, you got the stuff. Now what the f do I do with the stuff? You learn. There are different parts of starting out in Melee. You could be coming back after a long hiatus, played casually forever but are finally committing, coming from a different game competitively or a wide range of other possibilities. But something that benefits literally everyone is knowing how to find the answers to your questions. Want to learn how to wave dash or maybe how to download a software that helps you train wave dashing or just how to not get absolutely bodied in the Falcon Sheik matchup? YouTube, Google, and even Smashboards are your friend. Nowadays, it's easier than ever to find the answers to your questions to get better at this game, and whether you're figuring out how to shine at a shield against Peach, or just the very basics of dash dancing, there's an informative video or a full detailed post for you to learn from. Here's a couple we suggest. Smash tutorials slash advanced how to play. Great videos for people learning the basics of the advanced techniques in Melee, what character you should pick, or how to get your feet off the ground for the first time. 20XX slash Uncle Punch. 20XX and Uncle Punch's training mode are two phenomenal mods that give you the full game mode that Melee lacked on release. 20XX is a GameCube memory card that unlocks things like L cancel training, computers that DI in ways to actually help your combo game, and many other quality of life improvements. Uncle Punch is a rapidly growing training mod that we recommend more than anything, literally designed to help you go from how do I wave dash to where can I now practice my insane shield pressure, all designed with easy to follow directions and helpful tips. Discord groups. With the recent release of things like Slippy, more and more groups designed for giving beginners a place to play have surfaced. 
Discord groups like Melee Online and SSBM for new slash ultimate players are two great resources for people looking for ways to play without the fear of getting aggressively four stocked. By using the resources that we as a community have created in the decades of existing, you truly can have all of your questions answered. Practice makes perfect, but bad practice can create bad habits. Use your tools, grind your heart out, and you can become a Pokemon master or whatever. Number eight, unranked isn't everything. Slippy unranked is amazing. You get the ability to immediately play with someone who can show you all of the advanced techniques via destroying you over a two frame connection. Fizzy's creation is one of the best things to happen to this community, one of the best online experiences a fighting game could have, a modern marvel of technology and homebrew modifications, and yet in a monkey's paw situation, everyone online can be a total asshole. <laughs> we promise you, new beginner, that the experience you have hitting start on Slippy Unranked will be completely different from your experience at your first tournament. And instead of thinking that you need to be this good to enter events, throwing yourself into the mix will not only help you improve faster, but also help you meet the people in your local area who love this game as much as you do. While it may feel like the Falco repeatedly F-smashing and taunting you doesn't want you to continue playing Melee, if you were both sitting down at a setup at the weekly, they'd probably give you tips and advice the second you asked for it. Current circumstances may prevent you from in-person get-togethers, but we still highly recommend finding an online event with players from your region, and we'll help you with that in just a second. While online tournaments don't have the full experience, it will do a great job at giving you a better idea of what to expect in-game, and overall will get you acquainted with just how stuff works. Slippy is one of the most amazing tools we've ever been given, but the Melee community really is an in-person experience. There is a local scene with tournaments, good players, and great friends waiting for you to discover and be a part of it, and no matter where you are, there are people who want you to play Melee with them. Everyone involved in this community currently has gotten a similar feel of enjoyment from a giant tournament like Genesis as they have their local scenes big weekly or regional. Because this feeling of community is relevant across the scene. And for those of you who think there aren't people who play Melee near you, number seven, how to find your local scene slash tournaments. All right, kid in a random southern state, or the person claiming I have no tournaments near me in the middle of bump nowhere Wyoming, or the person living in a country I have never personally considered visiting, buckle down and we are here to help you find your local scene. It may not be as close as you want it to be, and you might have to make a couple friends to get rides to tournaments, but here is how you find your local scene. It is honestly that simple. Melee players are millennials and boomers, and to all our Zoomer Discord fiends watching, we're sorry, but you really gotta re-download or boot up that Facebook app. The amount of local events across the world for Melee is honestly incredible, and even small towns have become notorious in our scene for sprouting up players and tournaments out of nowhere. It may seem like your tiny neck of the woods would never have something like this near you, but through the help of Facebook groups or similar resources, you can find that community near you. Most states will have at least one Facebook group, with most having multiple for different parts of the state. Discords do exist for some of the regions, but most of the time they are more for finding online opponents near you. No matter where you are, you can find people who want to play this game with you, you just gotta make the effort. Almost every Melee Facebook group has a calendar with their weekly or regional events, and if not, someone can probably help you find events near you. Recently, online tournaments have become increasingly popular due to circumstance, and these regional Facebook groups can also inform you as to when and where these things happen. Again, even if you can't currently enter in-person events, we highly suggest entering online for an abbreviated version of that first local experience. Because at almost no effort of your own, you'll have such a better idea of how stuff works and also likely gain access to a Discord full of people looking to play and enter more online events. If you're still having trouble finding the scene near you, feel free to drop down to the YouTube comments, give us a ballpark estimate of where you're at, and I'm sure someone can try and help you out. Number six, what to expect from your first tournament. Okay, you ready? Got your controller? Got your $10 in singles to make the TO's life easier? Got your refillable water bottle and extra cash for food later? Ready to make friends? 
Okay, sport. There's probably gonna be a shit ton of chairs. It's probably gonna be stupid crowded. And there's probably gonna be a hint of sensory overload. There's probably gonna be a bunch of people quietly playing melee and having fun while one loud guy is screaming about his Spacey slash Falcon. You're gonna walk in, you're gonna go to the TO desk or the people running the tournament, and you're gonna tell them, hey, I'm new here. This is my first tournament. And they're gonna go, oh, that's so cool. I'll totally help you out. What's your tag? And you're gonna say, oh my fucking God, you don't have a tag. Run it back, rewind, rewind, rewind. Your melee tag. The name that represents you in bracket, the thing that will be forever associated with you throughout your melee journey, your new name. Listen, I know Butt Scratcher 97 seems like a great bit right now, but maybe two years from now when you're the number one player in southwestern North Dakota, you might think to yourself, if one more fucking person calls me B Scratch instead of Kyle, and then you punch a wall. Whatever tag you fall on will become ingrained in your personal journey, and I'm sure you can think of something better than Dr. PP. At your first tournament, there may be a flurry of bracket or tournament related terms, so finally, here's a cheat sheet of some commonly used ones to make sure you can avoid any confusion. Feel free to pause and go over some of these terms if they look foreign to you. Number 5. Stage Striking While being completely unaware of how stage striking works at your first tournament is almost a rite of passage in the melee community, we're going to help you out and just give you the rundown. Two players sit down in a setup. They play rock, paper, scissors, or RPS to determine who strikes the stage first. The player who wins rock, paper, scissors strikes or prevents the opponent from going to one of these five stages. These stages are known as the starting stages in melee. The other player strikes two stages, leaving only two left. The player who won RPS chooses the starting stage from the two remaining. The two players nod, maybe say a good luck if you're friendly, pound, and start the set. After game one, along with the starting stages, Pokemon Stadium, a counterpick stage, also becomes available. In the past, the melee scene has had more than just one counterpick stage, but nowadays, Pokemon is the only one. After every game in a best of three, the player who won bans one stage. In a best of five, however, there are typically no stage bans. Some helpful tips. On the stage selection screen, the stages used in competitive play can be conveniently found as the three at the bottom, the two at the top, and Pokemon Stadium, the lone warrior. Having an idea of what stages your character is strong on and what you dislike in character matchups will help prevent letting your opponent get some easy wins on your bad stages. In matchups where you feel lost counterpick wise, keep a note of the stages that your opponents ban to have a good idea of where they don't want to play. Number four, bracket slash friendlies etiquette. The tournament organizer or TO at your first weekly is one of the best resources you can have as a new player. Of course, respect the fact that they may be stressed out from handling a bracket in a room full of people, but just explaining to them that you're the new kid in town can get you on the right path. Once you've walked in the venue doors, be sure to locate the TO and pay your venue and entry fees to enter the tournament. Be aware and double check of what time the tournament actually starts and when you're needed to play. At some point, probably after that scheduled start time, the tournament organizer is going to start shouting nonsense like Drama Club versus Thunderpaste and possibly a TV number. But all of that is actually crucial information. <laughs> Be sure to listen for you and your opponent's tag amongst the chaos and to double check that you have the right person. After your match, win or lose, head back over to the TO desk and report your score. Ask questions and don't be intimidated by the players who are better than you. You may get stomped in your first matches, but every person inside that venue is there to play melee, and most of them are totally down to spend a few minutes explaining what went wrong if you catch them at the right time. Asking a top player for advice earlier in the tournament is much better than asking them after they've lost grand finals, and just try to find people at their most approachable. Asking someone a broad question like why do I get bodied by Falcon will probably get you a less informed answer than do you have any advice on how to make my recovery back to the stage less predictable. If you're at a bigger event, it's very likely that a ton of the setups will either be crowded or reserved for tournament use. Regardless of where you are, always be respectful if it looks like two people are gaming their hearts out because nobody wants to be interrupted during their last dock tight battle anime protagonist moment. If you're looking for friendlies, best case is to look for a setup with someone solo practicing, sitting by an open TV, or just two people clearly goofing off. 
Also, unless you're playing teams, always avoid trying to join a three-person setup because nobody wants to wait three games to play. A good way to check if what you're watching is a bracket match is to wait till the game finishes and ask, or if you clearly see that they aren't banning and are just going to random stages, you're in the clear. Depending on the friendly setup, it will be either winner stays or rotation. Winner stays is pretty self-explanatory, but rotation just means that win or lose, you'll play one game with both the players in the setup and then sit one out. More than anything, be sure to get out to your local scene as soon as it is safe and possible, and once you do, stay and play friendlies. Those first two sets that you may or may not inevitably totally lose will not be the full experience from this weekly, and it may seem a little awkward at first standing around in a room full of people you don't know, but there's a damn good chance that these strangers screaming about their dare combos will become your good friends. Or at least like, acquaintances on the internet. Number three, read the room. Listen, we're not in the business of explaining social cues to children, but we just want to make a couple of things blatantly clear. Respect the venue that you're in and the people running the show. By signing up at the door, you acknowledge that in some part, you now represent this community and there are countless ways you can be a productive force after doing so. Just like how our competitive scene has to fit the restrictions we've been given to us, sometimes we have to fit the restrictions given to us by these public businesses and organizers sticking their necks out for Melee. If it seems like the right venue to get loud for your homie, send a fucking crowd chant out, but don't expect to bring your Genesis voice to every small Tuesday night local. Separately, we know it may seem like the world is crashing down upon you after that losers round two match, but remember one very crucial fact. Melee is fun. We are all here to compete in this 2001 video game that we all adore, so don't let that Game 3 Crouch Cancel Down Smash hit you in real life, homie. All of us across the globe, including you, make up a community that we are extremely proud of, so please treat each gear in the engine with sincerity and respect. Our biggest advice here, try to let the losses roll off like water. You may lose a lot, and not every bracket run will be exactly like how your inner main character pictured it. But if you are stepping into that venue to learn something about Melee, instead of trying to brute force your way to dramatic tension, you're probably going to walk out with something worthwhile. Number 2, Expectations and Goals After your first tournament, it's probably a great time to set an achievable short-term goal. Once you have a better idea of how high you are in the totem pole, you can come back with a better perspective of your own skill level. Maybe you were pretty far off of taking a game in either of those bracket matches, but you were going pretty even with that other person you played friendlies with. The small accomplishments you can notch onto your belt will build you up as a player so much more than trying to force your way to be the best. Every once in a while, take breaks. The road to getting better at this game is going to come with tons of solo practice, try-hard friendlies, and plenty of new friends. But try to give those paws of yours a rest and practice healthy hand exercises. Any ego you have related to this game will probably get killed at your first tournament the same way it did for me. And that's okay. Because you can build yourself back up with the resources available and become the player or community member that you want to be but you just gotta take that first in-game punch. There is no skill level you need to be in order to be involved in this community. Maybe you take that first punch and it starts a competitive journey that Alston Melee will make YouTube videos about. Or maybe you take that first punch and a few after that and you realize that you don't wanna be the best in the world. And that's also totally fine. There are countless members of our scene who aren't even trying to be ranked in their region, but are still 100% a crucial part of that scene. Only you will know where Melee takes you, and the crazy part is, current you might not even know. And number one, this is more than a game, try everything. It is mind-boggling how many avenues a GameCube game has created. Do you think we started out thinking we were going to become a fucking Melee YouTube channel? The fact that I can use Adobe Premiere is completely credited and inspired by only one small part of this scene that exists online. Your skills and the things that you're currently good at can apply and create new possibilities for you that are outside of this game. The Melee community has competitors with never-ending storylines, 
fairy tale stories of the players from the past, streamers constantly keeping us relevant, talented artists and photographers making us look dope, full-fledged production teams, technological masterminds, commentators giving a voice to broadcasts, teams of organizers creating the best weekends of our lives. But now, the Melee community has you. Maybe you're gonna write a fucking book about your amazing experiences. Maybe you're gonna edit and create the coolest combo video since PGH Carol. Maybe you're gonna organize and create a tournament that will define your region. Or maybe you're gonna be a top 10 staple that will poem you to King Sheik in 2024. Maybe you're gonna change this scene. But maybe it's not in the ways that you thought. Help create a better, bigger, and safer scene. Volunteer and ask if your local organizers need any help when setting up or taking down the venue. Use the knowledge you have to help guide others to the right resources. Complain about Sheik as much as you goddamn want, but take a second to actually learn something between those breaths. There is a home for you in this community, and I can't wait to be proud of the personal accomplishments and the world you build in the years that follow. You, my friend, are the new and future generation of Melee. You will create the new scar jumps and the new thunders combos, and you will create the 5,000 entrant event in the place no one ever saw coming, and you will be the Melee community. Your journey starts here, and on behalf of everyone who has ever attended a tournament, welcome to the Super Smash Bros. Melee grassroots scene. Good luck. Thanks for watching Austin Melee! If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends or followers. The idea that this video caused one person out there to care about Melee a little bit more is like the coolest thing ever, and maybe you can add another person to our community. If you want to support Austin Melee, create weekly Melee content, and undertake her over the whole goddamn world, head on over to patreon.com slash Melee. The YouTube algorithm can feel like absolute RNG bullshit. So throwing us $4.20 adds a little bit of stability to the teeter-totter that is Melee content on YouTube. The biggest thank you possible to all the people already supporting us, they're scrolling on your screen right now. You are all truly the unsung heroes of our journey.